Hi everyone, the topic that I would like to discuss with you today is about St. John Paul II's view on human suffering and creation of World Day of the Sick. So as an introduction, Pope John Paul II, like his Savior and Lord, was well acquainted with suffering. And uh, we can trace this with the loss of his mother I when he was a child, the hardship he endured in his youth, you know, the dangerous times of living in Poland under Hitler, and the difficulties of the communist years. All of this has shaped this, his view of suffering. You know. He has meditated on this subject deeply and written frequently on on this theme so later we will discover what is the most uh, uh, important book on the meaning of suffering well it is no secret that uh, Pope John Paul II as a young man and even during the early years of his pontificate as you can see in the picture you know, above and then below is when his, his visit to Cuba so there was this uh, contrast no? when he was young as an athlete he is skilled in soccer swimming canoeing and skiing he exhibited a great physical presence no? during his papal trip to the United States uh, in the picture above as I have mentioned no? uh, he actually showed himself uh, visible himself to the crowd and from that uh, from the crowd no, he was in excellent physical condition waving to to those who are uh, to the people around no, and with just the right amount of drama as the vehicle moves slowly along no. so this was happened during uh, uh, before his assassination during uh, in, in 1981 no uh w while he was riding a the pope's mobile no so this this is a uh, all a remainder of saint john paul's healthier days no when he had all the physical stamina and in the picture below this was the time when he was already experienced already uh a suffering no physical suffering no he started to this was in 1990 when he a series of health problems began to take their toll no in 1992 he had actually undergone uh, surgery in because of a the, he has to undergo a surgery to remove a non-cancerous tumor in colon and then the following year he well he was uh, he fell and dislocated a shoulder no and in 1994 he suffered a broken femur in another fall no when while he was on his way to the comfort room no and then there was also an appendectomy followed in 1996 and during these years uh, a parkinson like condition if not the disease itself began to reveal its visible effects no so the point of this sobering details is to show that John Paul was clearly entering into this part of his life's journey marked by failing health and suffering no so you have already seen in the picture he is actually bringing a baston no? to support his uh, standing position no? so Carol uh, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger uh, looking at Carol he said that uh, the Holy Father's pain is written on his face. No? His figure is bent and he needs to support himself on his pastoral staff. No? Uh, he leans on the cross, on the crucifix. Certainly, uh, this Pope was beginning to lean on Christ's cross in more ways than one or no, than before. No? So, next is with this condition that he had pope john paul ii he bears these infirmities with honor no so during his visit this was the president of cuba no fidel castro his papal visit to or trip to cuba posed a sharp contrast to his visit 
in the United States his first visit in, in 1979 when he was still uh, as I have said he has not yet uh, being uh, having experienced the assassination attempt in 1981 although he regained uh, his physical strength but of course in 1998 he was already started to experience a lot of uh, physical pain no? suffering so in Cuba the Pope's athletic stamina was gone no? his gait was slow and at times shuffling no? his speech was often slurred and his hand sometimes trembled no? kurug na yang kamot many of us faced with the same test would be tempted to shrink from public view we might be shy no? as if infirmity was an embarrassment or personal disgrace but not so to Pope John Paul II he refused to go into hiding as long as he could effectively fulfill his ministry as as a Pope no? so he bore his in infirmities as if there were badges of honor and opportunities for imitating the courage of the suffering Christ no? So his humble, unpretentious, and unembarrassed acceptance of sufferings was a dramatic form of witness. No? The Pope offered the world a wonderful model for responding with grace to the test of suffering and illness. No? As Cardinal Ratzinger observed, John Paul helps us realize that even age has a message and suffering a dignity and a salvific force. So this is how St. John Paul show that in in suffering for Cardinal Ratzinger it has a message no? and when you suffer you suffer with dignity and it has a salvific force no? so while the Pope was in Cuba this anecdote was circulating someone asked uh, the Pope if it would be better if he would retire no? or perhaps even his own doctors would ask can a pope ever retire? No? So his answer is uh, if I am no longer able, God will call me. But when he was in Cuba, no, he actually just uh, wittingly said that uh, yes, I have trouble with walking and my hands are trembling, but I don't run the church with my feet er, or my hands, but with my mind. So but we cannot really s be certain of the someone uh, asked this but it is just an anecdote no? but it really captures something of the Pope's spirit and his ability to respond to challenges with good humor okay now he actually have this uh, thought of writing about the meaning of suffering no? so besides being a heroic witness in the face of suffering Pope John Paul II has often been written inspiringly on the subject. No? In 1984, after the, uh, the assassination attempt of St. John Paul II, barely two or three years, no? he published the apostolic letter on the Christian meaning of suffering. No? It is believed that it is written out of his response to the personal suffering he endured following the assassination attempt on his life by Mehmet Ali Agka in 1981 no? when confronted with suffering most of us desperately seek answers to the question why why me or why now why is this unexpected form no? so in that said apostolic letter Pope John Paul II states that Christ does not really give us an answer to such questions but rather a lived example no when we approach Christ with our questions about the reason for suffering, so why do we suffer? The Pope says that we cannot help noticing that the one to whom we put the question is himself suffering and wishes to answer from the cross, no? from the heart of his own suffering. No? St. John Paul in, his, in this letter he said that Christ does not explain in the abstract the reasons for suffering. He points out but before all else he says follow me come take part through your suffering in this work of saving the world no? gradually as the individual takes up his cross spiritually uniting himself to the cross of Christ 
the salvific meaning of suffering is revealed before him. No? So in 1993, Pope John Paul II instituted the annual World Day of the Sick as a way to bring compassion and greater attention to the sufferings of humanity as well as to the mystery of suffering itself. No? So this event is held on February 11, no? each year on the Feast of Our Lady of Lords. No? The Pope explains that the Lord's Shrine at the foot of the Pyrenees has become a temple of human suffering. No? So the message of St. John Paul for this first annual World Day of Zeke offered these words of comfort to he offered words of comfort to suffering people around the world. No? He said, Your sufferings, accepted and born with unshakable faith, when joined to those of Christ, take on extraordinary value for the life of the church and the good of humanity. So here he suggested, he also suggested in the same message that suffering can be transformed into something noble and good. No? He said, in the light of Christ's death and resurrection, illness no longer appears as an exclusively negative event. No? It is seen as an opportunity to release love, to transform the whole of human civilization into a civilization of, of love. So this is found in his apostolic letter uh, on the Christian meaning of suffering. No? In Latin, salvifice dolores. No? So we cannot really choose to have no pain in our lives because pain in some form is inescapable no? we have no choice about pain or suffering sooner or later everyone must face it no? even Jesus and his mother had to undergo pain no? whether we bear it with love or not however it is a different matter we do have a real choice there no? we are free to choose the pain of loving or the pain of not loving no? the latter being a pain that is empty and barren no? that is the pain of not loving no? a pain without any redeeming qualities now we know that Jesus and his mother and other heroic witnesses like John Paul II have chosen the pain of loving that is they undergo suffering for the love of God and of humanity so their pain has rich in meaning no? and they even become the source of joy you know, embracing this suffering that fulfillment no? there is this rich in meaning because you believe that this suffering is you share in the suffering of Jesus now let's talk of a this world of suffering no? it is said that suffering seems almost inexpressible and at the same time it is not transferable so Pope John Paul II no, notes that nothing else requires as much in its objective reality to be dealt with, meditated upon, and conceived as an explicit problem. No. It is not a question here merely of giving a description of suffering. There are other aspects that go beyond the sphere of description. No. So medicine as science and also as the art of healing discovers in the vast field of human sufferings the methods of reaction, namely therapy. No? Yet the field of human suffering is much wider. Man suffers in different ways not always considered by medicine. No? Suffering is still wider than sickness no? and more complex. No? So at the same time, it is still more deeply rooted in humanity itself no? an idea of the problem comes to us from the distinction between physical and moral suffering no? this indicates this indicates the bodily and spiritual element of the human being no? physical suffering is present when the body is hurting in some way whereas moral suffering is pain of the soul no? so moral suffering seems as it were less identified and less reachable by therapy. Now, there are attempted answers concerning suffering. No? Because suffering is both so universal and unsettling, 
it is not at all surprising to find many attempted answers to explain this dreaded dilemma so here are I would like to share a few of the suggested solutions number one is attempted answer concerning suffering is an evil former life so I think this is coming from uh, most of this belief uh, are coming from the Eastern religions which advocate reincarnation no? offer this interesting answer namely that all suffering in one's present life is simply a punishment for those wrongs committed in a former existence so you suffer because of your sins in the past no in your past life I mean no so if this be true what bloody thirsty monster perhaps Joseph Job Prophet Jeremiah Saint Paul and even Christ himself must have been in previous lives no that is the that the truth no another attempted answers concerning suffering is about this the dualism no so like in the Eastern religions like incarnation dualism is a vital plank in the platform of some Eastern religions no? in essence it says there are but two gods no? or principles governing the universe one good and the other bad they are equal eternal and non-contradictory so because of the presence of these two gods so that's their answer no? in dualism another is fatalism no? I think this is from uh, from the Islamic community with its hundreds of millions accept the most frightful suffering with a shrug and the comment it is the the will of Allah no? so that's another attempted answers concerning suffering next is hedonism this is the modern playboy philosophy to pain no? in answer to the existence of pain no? so if according to this doctrine if it feels good do it twice no? eat drink and be merry for tomorrow we we die no? in other words the answer to pain is to substitute it with pleasure no? replace it with sex money power drugs or whatever else turns one on no? so that's their how they respond to uh, concerning suffering next is evolution no? what do you mean by this this simply this says simply that suffering like digestion is part of life we are assured that for some unknown reason those accidental and uncaring mechanical forces which brought life out of nothing into existence also program that life organisms would suffer before they eventually pass into eternal oblivion okay next are is the still stoicism the stoic would tell us suffering can be overcome merely by ignoring it so that's how they simply respond to the problem of suffering while the Christian science no, according to its founder Mary Baker Eddy the solution to pain and suffering is to utterly deny its presence for in reality neither exists except as error in mortal minds no? next is a powerless God this proposal concludes that the God of the universe while possessing pity does not exercise complete power in other words like some earthly doctor he stands by helpless and prostrated in the midst of human who okay next is a pitiless God here we have just the opposite of a powerless God this position holds that God indeed possesses sufficient power but is short on compassion thus all sorrow and suffering can be directly traced back to an indifferent deity lastly number 10 the, uh, because uh, what is uh, the source perhaps the problem of the suffering is because of personal sin this answer rests upon the basic assumption that it is never in the perfect will of God for a Christian to suffer 
especially if the suffering lies in the physical realm of sickness. Therefore, the conclusion is that all physical suffering in the life of a believer must be directly and only attributed to some personal sin in his or her life. So this is how they respond to answers. No? Of course, our priests, pastors would have a different answers, but this is what is uh, most common, perhaps most common in the literatures no? now going back to what Saint John Paul II believed about the meaning of suffering Pope John Paul II's 1984 apostolic letter Salvifice Dolores uh, in English on the Christian meaning of s human suffering clearly expounds the dignity and the salvific power of suffering no? the letter begins with quoting the Apostle Paul no? That says, in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. So here, the Apostle Paul was able to rejoice in suffering because of his discovery that to suffer is to partake. We will share in the salvific suffering of Christ for the benefit of the church. No? So suffering has a meaning and dignity because of its redemptive power and spiritual significance in the context of the sacrifice and passion of Christ. So therefore, the proper human response to suffering is twofold. No? Number one, heartfelt compassion. And number two, the imperative of faith. So suffering invokes comp evokes compassion. No? It also evokes respect and its own way it intimidates for in suffering is contained the greatness of a specific mystery you know? this special respect for every form of human suffering must be set at the beginning of what will be expressed later by the deepest need of the heart and also by the deep imperative of faith you know? in addition pope john paul ii also pointed out that christ does not explain the mystery of suffering nor does he give abstract reason christ simply calls his disciples as i have mentioned earlier that to take up their cross to follow him no? by following the example of christ his disciples will begin to understand the redemptive value of suffering and experience the joy of fellowshipping with with christ no? So this theme it was reiterated in uh, 1993, as I have mentioned earlier, in the World Day of the Sikh Celebration, uh, in his message for this first annual World Day of the Sikh. So he assured, the Pope assured the suffering masses all over the world. He said, your sufferings accepted and borne with unshakable faith when joined to those of Christ take on extraordinary value for the life of the church and the good of humanity as i have mentioned so he further emphasized that suffering can be redemptive not just for the sufferers but for the world no in the light of christ's death and resurrection illness no longer appear as an exclusively negative event no so throughout his long ministry especially during the last few months of his life pope john paul ii modeled for us the joy of suffering precisely because suffering is God's gift to the church and to the world from the first cry of a newborn baby to the last breath of an old person the long journey is often accompanied by suffering in one form or another and the only way we can go through life with hope and joy is to understand the deep spiritual meaning of suffering as revealed by Christ so now Pope John Paul II wrote a letter to the elderly. No? In 1999, Pope John Paul II published a letter to the elderly just as earlier in his pontificate, the Pope often showed a special concern to the youth of the world. So now he shows a similar concern for elderly people who also represent a very important segment of humanity so like the pope himself a good number of elderly people are susceptible to suffering and 
failing health. No? So in his comments to the elderly, the Pope reveals some of his own sentiments about the challenges associated with aging, failing health, and the end of life on earth. No? So he encourages his elderly brothers and sisters to live with serenity the years that the Lord has granted to them. To them no? Then John Paul adds this poignant personal note, I feel a spontaneous desire to share fully with you my own feelings at this point of my life. After more than 20 years of ministry on the throne of Peter, despite the limitations brought on by age, I continue to enjoy life. For this, I thank the Lord. It is wonderful to be able to give oneself to the very end for the sake of the kingdom of God. At the same time, I find great peace in thinking of the time when the Lord will call me no? from life to life and so I often find myself saying with no trace of melancholy a prayer recited by priest after the celebration of the Eucharist no? it says that at the hour of my death call me and bid me come to you this is a prayer of Christian hope which in no way detracts from the joy of the present while entrusting the future to God's gracious and loving care no? so for for Pope John Paul II he said that it is the deepest yearning of the human heart even in those who are not conscious of it no? to be to be with God so for our reflection no? indeed suffering is universal all creation suffers no? that's Romans chapter 8 verse 22 and in our interconnected world we know about suffering all over the world if we have compassion for those we see, we we suffer with them. No? We asked in depression, if God is good, why do I suffer? If God is all-powerful, why doesn't He deliver me? So we find it difficult to reconcile the fact of our suffering with our faith in God. Christ's redemption on the cross doesn't mean we will not suffer, but it equips us to face suffering, no? embrace suffering, and one day, God will wipe every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain because in our suffering believers have hope because we know that suffering is brief and our blessing in heaven are eternal. Okay, so that is all for my discussion about this topic. So the initiative of Pope John Paul II about suffering and a better understanding about suffering. So, I hope that you will also subscribe and like the video and sh perhaps make comments. And so, that's it. Thank you for listening.